So this section of notes begins the second half of this course. And the second half of the course is about Markov processes that are still in discrete space, but are now in continuous time. So we're going to spend quite a few sections on the most important continuous time discrete space process, and that's called the Poisson process. So in the last subsection, which hopefully you've read through before looking at this video, uh, I reminded of you of some facts about the Poisson distribution. And the Poisson distribution is something you should know from last year, for example. Now the Poisson distribution is useful for measuring the number of arrivals of something in a short amount of time. For example, it could be uh, the number of claims to an insurance company or the number of calls to a call center. And so the Poisson distribution is for a set time, how many arrivals will I get? However, in this course, we're interested in stochastic processes. So we're interested in keeping track of the number of arrivals over time. And for that, we will use the Poisson process. So if we think the number of arrivals is in a fixed amount of time is a Poisson distribution, let's start by thinking about what this ought to look like if we extend it over time. So let's write xt, or the number of arrivals, up to time t. So that's going to keep track of how many arrivals we've had up to time t. Note that uh, when we're doing continuous time processes, you're going to use this notation where we use a lowercase t in brackets, whereas in discrete time we had previously used an, a subscript n. Here we're going to use a t in brackets for a continuous time process. So if we're keeping track of the number of arrivals up to time t, what should the state space be? Well, the state space is going to be counting the number of arrivals. So that should be the positive integers, right? 0, 1, 2. Because we can have naught arrivals, for example, at the start. When we start counting, there'll be none. And then we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's at least theoretically no limit to how big it can be. So that's our state space. But of course, we're keeping track of this through time. So our time index set will be r plus, by which I mean the set of real numbers greater than or equal to zero. T and r such that t is greater than or equal to zero. So that's going to be our time index. Uh, in order to think about what properties we might want it to have, uh, Let's have a specific example in mind, just so we can talk about something. Let's say uh, calls to a call center. And let's suppose they arrive at a, at a rate lambda. And let's just say that's uh, 100 for the purposes of this example. OK, so what properties might we want this process xt to have? It seems like when we start counting, that will be x0, there won't have been any calls arrive yet at time 0. So that should be x0 equals 0. That's one property that we'd want this to have. So the calls in the first hour, so that's x1, right? The number of time, number of arrivals by time t equals 1. Let's say we're counting in hours. So we'll want that to be plus on lambda equals plus on 100. What about the calls in the second hour? Well, so that will be x2 minus x1, right? It's the number of calls we've had by time t equals 2. Subtract the number of calls that happened in the first hour. So the number of calls within, that arrive within the second hour is x2 minus x1. But we'll want that to be Poisson lambda as well, right? Because that's the number of arrivals in a one-hour period. And just because it happens to be a different hour period, we still think it should be Poisson lambda, because that's the rate they're arriving. I'm just going to add in per hour there to remind myself. 
Okay, but not only that, we should expect how many calls we get in the first hour and how many calls we get in the second hour to be independent, right? Because these are two different time periods. So the arrivals should both be Poisson 100, but they should be independent because they're different time periods. So that's another property that we'd like our process to have. Third property. What about the number of calls in a two-hour long period? Calls in a two-hour period. So we could call that x t plus 2 minus x t, say that's the two-hour period starting at time t, right? It goes from t to t plus 2, and to get the calls in that time period, you get the total number of calls by the end minus the total number of calls at the point we started. So x t plus 2 minus x t is the number of calls in a two-hour period. Well, if we're getting lambda equals 100 per hour, this should be Poisson 2 lambda equals Poisson 200, right? If we're getting 100 calls per hour, we'd expect to get 200 calls in two hours. And similarly, along the same lines, if you had a half-hour period, which would be x t plus a half. Remember, t is continuous, so it doesn't have to be an integer we put in there. We'd expect that to be Poisson a half lambda, or Poisson 50 for these cases. So those are like the three properties we could reasonably expect such an arrivals process to have. Starts at zero, this independence thing, and this third thing to do with the length of each time period. And in fact, that's what we can write down basically as a definition of the Poisson process. We have the first one, that it starts at zero. Now then we have this one, that arrivals in different time periods are independent. Note this condition here that t1 less than t2 less than t3 less than t4. This means that the two time periods from x2 x, from t1 to t2 and from t3 to t4 are not overlapping. Obviously, you have, if you have two overlapping time periods, some arrivals will count for both of those, so they won't be independent. But if the time periods don't overlap, then we could when we can reasonably expect them to be independent. And this one is the one we were talking about how in a two-hour time period you get two lambda. So here we have a period of length s starting at time t and going up to time t plus s. So that's a time period of time s. And so we think that should be Poisson of lambda times s. So that's our definition, or at least our first definition, of a Poisson process. It's a process in continuous time, discrete space, with those three properties. OK, uh, let's look at some examples to see how this works. So example 13.1 claims arrive at an insurance company at a rate of lambda equals 8 per hour, modelled as a Poisson process. What is the probability there are no claims in a given 15-minute period? Uh, OK. So we're measuring here by the hour, right? So a 15-minute period goes from some time t to some time t plus a quarter, because 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So if we're measuring in hours, uh, we want a quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, from time t to time uh, t plus a quarter. And so by uh, this second property up here, that should be Poisson of lambda times a quarter. Right, that should be Poisson a quarter lambda, and since lambda equals 8 in this question, that should be Poisson 2. Right, so that was using property 2 of the Poisson process to tell us that this thing should be Poisson 2. So now we just have to ask, what's the property probability that it's 0? So that's the probability that a Poisson 2 is equal to 0. So that's... Uh, e to the minus 2, 2 to the naught, over naught factorial, by what we know about the Poisson distribution, either by remembering it from last year or from the previous subsection, uh, which was just e to the minus 2, because 2 to the 0 is 1 and 0 factorial is 1. 
it's kind of perhaps worth remembering that the probability of Poisson distribution is equal to zero, is just e to the minus lambda. Uh, and e to the minus two is about 0.135. I calculated that earlier and wrote it down for myself. So the probability that there are no claims in a given 15 minute period are about 14%. Here's another example. A professor receives visitors to her office at a rate of lambda equals 2.5 per day, modelled as a Poisson process. What's the property? She gets at least one visitor every day in this five-day week. Uh, you can see that I cut and pasted this wrong for my video, and I've got the first sentence of the answer in. But it's a very good first sentence, which is suggesting that the probability she gets at least one visitor on a given day, so probability no visitor on a given day. So that's, well, the number of visitors on a given day is a Poisson, uh, lambda equals 2.5 here. That's the probability of the Poisson 2.5 equals zero. Uh, so that's uh, e to the minus 2.5, uh, which uh, I calculated earlier is not point, uh, zero eight two which means the probability at least one visitor on a given day is one minus that which is zero point nine one eight. Okay, but this was saying what's the probability she gets at least one visitor every day. The thing is each day is a non-overlapping time period, right? The days don't overlap, they are separate. So by property three up here, the number of arrivals on each day are independent. So property greater than one visitor on each day, all five days, uh, is going to be that we want this thing that happens with property 0.918 happen all five days, so we can raise it to the power of five, because those are independent events by the third property of the Poisson distribution. And I calculated that earlier, that's 0.652, or about 65%. So those were two examples of using Poisson processes, in particular using the uh, Poisson increments there, and the independence of the increments there.